Uh, someone in Liverpool, MP for West Derby, Ian Byrne, has been fighting to tackle food poverty for many years now, co-founder of Fan Support and Food Bank. The fight continues. The fight really steps up a notch as well uh, in the coming weeks. We're going to talk about a, a great campaign. Ian, Ian, obviously a shocking week for you to, to see these images, but, but I presume you weren't surprised either. No, no, no. I'm good to be on the show, Jay, and hope you're safe, uh, safe and well. Uh, no, the images were, were shocking, weren't they? But, you know, the, the outsourcing of, of food provision like that has, has really uh, shown up over the course of COVID. If you remember the, some of the parcels that people who were shielding were getting in March, uh, they were awful. Uh, so it's just... Contracts getting now handed out to firms that are maximising profits uh, instead of well-being. It, you know, it's, it's it's symbolic of the government's ideology and where, where they've uh, actually taken the COVID response to. And there's so many shocking examples of, of outsourcing to private firms who are uh, putting profit over over the uh, good health of people. So, yeah, for me... It was, you know, it, we knew something like that had come, but it was uh, to see it so graphically illustrated on social media was was quite a shock and it was shameful. Do you think 2020 and, and the pandemic, obviously it, it's been so, so tough for so many people, for millions of people. I think I read on, on your website, 10 million people in the UK face some form of, of food poverty every single day. But do you think the pandemic has kind of have opened, has opened it up and opened up the debate, if you like, around this? It will shone a, it's shone a light on it, hasn't it? It's shone a real light on on the inequalities that have been growing steadily since 2010, Jay. And, you know, for one of the richest countries in the world to have uh, 10 million people uh, potentially in food insecurity and the uh, report that came out from the Joseph Roundtree Foundation a couple of days ago was 14.5 million living in poverty. Uh, you know, these terrible, terrible statistics, but, you know, Look at the human cost. You know, numbers can get wheeled off. Human cost in our communities. And, you know, we've seen before to become an MP, obviously, you mentioned working with Fan Support and Food Bank, still doing it now. But, you know, obviously, during COVID, we haven't got the ability to go out as, as much and, and really have them face to face conversations. But we could see it day to day, you know, what was actually happening in our communities. But what COVID's done is, is shone a real light on the inequalities of society. And also, it's put lots of people into that position who never thought for one minute they'd actually be in the position of accessing food banks, food pantries, universal credit. And, uh, you know, that's a terrible uh, toll uh, on people who are actually in that position. But, you know, it, that's what COVID has done. And, you know, for me, you know, we, we do what we do. And you mentioned before, we were speaking about Liverpool's fantastic response uh, to making sure that no one gets left behind. But what do we do post-COVID to ensure that society evens up, to, show, to, to ensure that we haven't got 10 million people uh, in food poverty, we haven't got 14.5 million people living in poverty. And that will be the test for this government and also for the, for the whole movement in the country. You, you are doing something, you're actively doing something, you always are, but, but but this is a great thing. There's a petition right now, I've just checked it, so it's on over 19,000 signatures now, Ian. Um, it's the right to food. Just just explain to us exactly what it is and, and what your goal is with, with this petition and this campaign. The idea behind the right to food is obviously, it, it, sorry, it's to, it's to make government accountable uh, for policy decisions which impinge on people's right to food in a dignified manner. And it if you think about, for an example, because people, some people get confused about what the right to food actually entails. You know, I got one person say to me, uh, one chap said to me, well, is it just supermarkets open up and we all have the ability to go, you know, to go in and get food for nothing? It's not, it's not that. It's about challenging policies which have impinged on people's ability to feed themselves. We say 10 million people as it stands now who haven't got the ability to put a meal on the table, and that's where we are, and that is completely unacceptable. So, so it's not about giving a family a voucher, a legal requirement no. that they've got to do that. It's, it's, it's about you guys basically being able to challenge the government more on what they are seeing as, as adequate. And organisations involved and the individuals as well. So, yeah, absolutely. You know, when we sat down with the Trussell Trust and we talked about the need and you know, being fighting that as well, obviously, to keep the £20 increased universal credit, you need po poverty is it, it, it's systemic in the country at the moment. So the, some of the uh, fantastic campaigns about obviously putting more money into people's pockets, you know, we've got trade unions who are fighting for, uh, you know, 
10 pounds an hour. You look across in America, Joe Biden talking about $15 an hour minimum wage. You know, this needs to happen. We need, you know, to, for the more equal society. But the right of few can underpin or be one of them building blocks, Jay, for the more equal society because we cannot carry on where we've gone. And COVID has shown that the position where we are now as a society is absolutely untenable. It's unequal and it's a model and it needs to change. So on Wednesday, uh, Jay, uh, we, we put a motion, going to put a motion through council, which is asking Liverpool as to pass uh, a ask, which makes Liverpool a right to food city. And we're asking uh, Andy Dimbleby, who's in charge of the national food strategy, to put the right to food into that strategy. That's going to be the ask. So Liverpool will hopefully become an official, officially uh, right to food city. Extremely proud of the fact uh, that that's, that, that's going to happen. We've sent, uh, we sent letters out asking people to sign the pledge, faith leaders, trade union leaders, CEOs of our football clubs. Uh, and I think it's something that if we really collectively all come together on, uh, I think we can achieve that because the government has shown itself to, be, to, to not have the answers. So to put that into law takes it out of their hands and they've got to implement policies which hopefully will, uh, will rectify the situation now where we've got 11 million people who can't, 10 million, 11 million people can't put a meal on the table. So, so we still want people to sign for this, even though we've got this title now in Liverpool, we, we still need signatures on that petition, don't we? Absolutely. The petition is uh, a separate which gives us the ability to debate it in the house of commons and that will that we, we triggered 100,000 signatures then that gives us the ability to debate that in the house of commons and it's all about keeping it in 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 uh, on the front foot it's all about ensuring that the governments cannot escape uh, what's actually happening in their community well listen we're going to put that, that petition online now make sure you get fantastic on there um we, we got to talk about something else that you're doing in west derby mp4 west derby uh, grow West Derby. T- tell us about this because this, this again is kind of taking it to the next step and doing something really proactive. Yeah, and and, and that's something which the, the right to food campaign's got three elements to it. It's got the parliamentary element, which which I'm building alliances in Parliament to, to to try and push the government and get it into the national food strategy. We've got the national campaign, which transport and food banks has been running for five years, and that's grown now. We've got. You've got many football clubs coming on board and many more wanting to come on board and football fans being a fantastic you know, advocate for their communities and really empowering each other and working for the common good, which sometimes football fans aren't looked in that light. And the Grove West Derby is something which we're extremely proud of, which focuses on West Derby. We're working with the fantastic Microsoft College, uh, Marble Allotments, and the idea is for everybody to to have the ability, if they wish, to take part in growing, whether they've got a yard like I have, I live in Anfield, my, my green area is Stanley Park. So if you haven't got a garden, if you have got a garden, uh, we're working with uh, marble allotments, as I mentioned, other allotment sites in West Derby. So once we come, while we're in COVID and once we come out of COVID, we want to give everybody the ability to grow. Growing is fantastic for your mental health It's and, and it's just bringing that wonderful community collaboration that we've seen in March, uh, April, and everybody's come together. And we mentioned Liverpool's come together as a city the last year. It's building on that, Jay. So it's educating people about the, uh, the food, the ability to cook. It's got so many little facets to it. What we're extremely proud of is that Microsoft College are working with us, and they're going to be offering BTEX so people can come to the allotment, learn how to use power tools once we can, and you know maybe take a different pathway in life which is more agricultural so it's a, it, it encompasses the whole of West Derby we want everybody to get involved and play their part. Uh, Ian just away from that and talking about the city in general you know we've got a lot of work to do in terms of coming forward and recovering f- from the pandemic in the coming months and years what, what are your thoughts on Liverpool coming back? It certainly will come back, won't it? You know, we, we always do. We've got that spirit of, it, of of coming back, and it's such a wonderful city. And the offering uh, that it offers uh, to people across the world, and the name recognition that we've got, uh, will will undoubtedly mean that we will build back, and we will come back uh, from what we're experiencing now. It's extremely difficult times at the moment, you know, it, it, for so many people on so many levels. But I think there's hopefully light at the end of the tunnel with the vaccinations and we will come out of this eventually and I think Liverpool will be in a strong position because you know we we were we were in 
such a fantastic moment before COVID. Obviously, you know, being a Liverpool fan and with Everton, who's making the me, but league champions and everything that was coming with the city, and you could see it was, you know, it was it, it was buzzing, and you know the liners were coming in, and we were just seeing the city, the the knowledge quarter, it was coming together. It's took a blow, but we will be covered because you know we we are that type of people. You know, we will come back from this, and and part of what I'm trying to do, uh, and. It, it, with the light of food is make sure that when we do we build back in a better way we build back and afford a far more equal society because pre-covid we had terrible we had terrible issues in our communities through austerity we've had 10 years of austerity so you know we're really on our knees then we get covid so what we've got to be doing uh, as communities and as movements and as, as labor say me as a labor politician we've got to be arguing that the last 10 years it cannot uh, be repeated in the next in the next decade moving forward you know our children need the best uh, opportunities now people need the best opportunities and that's what we should all be fighting for and I think Liverpool will come back from this I've got every uh, confidence in the ability of the people and the businesses to come back uh, stronger and hopefully in a more equal fairer nicer society Listen, that's a perfect way to end the and you're so so passionate about this and, and you have been for many years. Keep up to date with, with fan support and food banks. They've also got the pantry bus, uh, which is out and about. I've seen this week and obviously signed that petition right to food as Liverpool becomes a right to food city. MP for West Derby, Ian Byrne. Thank you for chatting, mate. Appreciate it. Thanks, Shay. Stay safe.